Hey, I'm John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. I normally release my videos on a Friday and today is no exception. However, the day that I release this will actually be Christmas Day 2020. And so I thought I'd do something a little different in the beginning of it, just to celebrate the day. I remember growing up, we always watched the Charlie Brown Christmas and that was so much fun to see that every year and I always looked forward to it. One of the parts that I always looked forward to was the reading of the Christmas story. And so I thought it just might be neat to read that today at the beginning of this video before we get on with the modeling. So if you'll bear with me for a minute while I get my magic eyes on so I can see what I'm reading. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And like Linus said, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. So anyway, thanks for indulging me with that. I hope you're having a wonderful day with friends and family as much as possible as is in these times that we're living in. And thank you so much for watching my videos, supporting my channel, and I look forward to uh, seeing you more in 2021. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Now, let's get on with the modeling. <music> Hey, this is John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. In this video, I'm going to be building Bandai's Harrow Plot Mobile Harrow. And if you're not familiar with who Harrow is, it's a little, I guess you'd call him the best description, is a round, bouncing digital assistant that follows around many of the characters in some of the Mobile Suit Gundam uh, anime videos. And he's, he's just a little character that adds some comic relief uh, throughout uh, the various uh, cartoons that he's in, I guess you'd say, the anime. But I wanted to build this purely for fun. I think while I always have fun building models, I think sometimes picking a model that is, I guess you'd say, silly fun can be very beneficial. There's, there's no pressure on it. Um, there's, no, there's no expectation of this is how it's supposed to look right or wrong. It's, it's, it's pure fun. It's pure silly. You can do it however you want. And so that's what I was really looking forward to uh, with this build. Now, the parts themselves are typical Bandai. They're sharp casting, uh, just beautiful, gorgeous parts. The fit, of course, is extremely good. Uh, the assembly is simple. You could hand this to you could probably work with a four or five year old. In fact, I know you can. I've had friends that have done this with their kids. You could sit down with a four or five year old and work with them. And, you know, you'd want to clip the parts off for them. But this assembles much like Lego. You just snap it together and there's nothing difficult about any of it. And so within a very short time, you end up with a pretty cool looking little model that that is articulated and that you can play with. Um, you don't have to paint it. You don't have to do anything with it. You just build it and have fun. And if you were doing this with a kid, uh, they would they would absolutely love it. But I'm a big kid, so I'm still absolutely loving it, though I do have plans to, to paint and weather this guy later on. And yeah, he looks a little silly, but I kind of like that kind of goofy look that he has on his face there. Now, even though this model is purely for silly fun, I did go in and apply some, some modeling uh, techniques to it. Of course, you want to do your, your nub cleanup across the parts, and I just use a, an X-Acto knife for that, and then this Tamiya file, which is a great way to smooth that down. And then I can later go back with sanding sticks if I want to, if it's not as smooth as I like. But I just check it with my thumbnail to see if it's, it's fitting right. With Bandai kits, because they're snap fit, they're fairly easy to build ahead of time so that you can see how it's going to look. You can see where any panel lines 
uh, or seam lines are rather that you're going to need to deal with. So they, they make building these really, really simple. But it, the process also just kind of, as I'm working through this, besides the fun fact, I mean, it's just fun to snap something up. Again, it's, it's like Lego, but it kind of gives me a time to think about the model, look at the model, get a feel for the model, and start planning where I want various weathering uh, uh, elements to go, how I want to paint it. Uh, when, you, when you hold it in your hands, there's, there's something about feeling that and, and getting an idea for how you want that to look. Because honestly, at this point in the build, I was just simply snapping it up. I was mulling over in my mind as I was doing this video, um, just mulling over in my mind, how am I going to finish this? How do I want this to look? And I kind of let the model determine that as I went along. As you know, that just showed building the arm. Now I'm working on the leg. And the whole time I'm thinking, do I want to do this in a, a Warhammer style? Do I want to do it in a Gundam style? I thought about making it look like, you know, a Russian tank from World War II. I, I began thinking of all of these different possibilities of how I could make it look as I was building it. So that's part of the beauty of these silly fun models is it's really wide open. Whatever you want to do is okay. Um, and you can, you can just let your imagination run wild. And because you're not having to fight with the fit, you're not having to fight with the model, you can, as you're, as you're doing this, you're just enjoying the process. I know I do. Um, and and it, it brings um, almost, a, it's almost a refresher from, I guess you'd say, regular modeling. Whether you're building Gumpla or traditional modeling or whatever, silly fun like this just is, I've heard uh, my friend Fox, model making guru, he likes to use the term a palate cleanser. And that's really what this is. It's, it's something that is just a diversion from the normal and it allows you to just take it in any direction you want. And you can see pretty quick I had him built up. Now this is a, you know, it's a silly looking little thing. I mean, he's got these little gangly legs and those Ronald McDonald feet and the you know, big round head and that goofy smile, but it's got an endearing look to it, and it's a lot of fun. Now, I did want to do some modifications, so uh, I had decided what I wanted to, to do with this, so I began the process of disassembling it so that I could start uh, making a few changes and, and adding elements to it to get it going in the direction that I wanted the model to end up uh, looking like. And again, because it's snap fit, it comes apart fairly easily. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was to add some rockets. Uh, so I clipped these off of a Warhammer 40K spare part, and they're going to go in those little holes there. So he's got some rockets uh, loaded up there on his shoulders. I also wanted to, uh, to go in and add some additional parts. This is a shield from a Gundam set and it's a spare Gundam set. I have no idea what it's from or how long I've had it, but I clipped that in there. I wanted to go in and add some of these big thrusters on the side of the leg. They, they fit in here. Bandai's parts uh, generally are interchangeable and I thought, you know, I've got these two big thrusters. Let me stick them on the legs and yeah, they look goofy, but in the balance of the whole thing, I think it's, it's perfect to push the goofiness to another level. Then I also wanted to, uh, to get rid of that big hole there in the bottom of the foot. Um, not for any realism standpoint, but just because I just thought it looked kind of bad. So I just simply added some plastic plate to the bottom of the foot and I'll glue that on, clip that off and let it dry and it'll, uh, it'll look good. Then I'm, then I decided, here's the direction I want to go. This is going to be Machining Krieger, Karo Pla. Um, I modified the arm just a little bit to accept this laser arm from one of my Machining Krieger. Uh, I think it was an SAFS kit that I had in my spares box. So that's going to be his left arm or his right arm, and he's going to have a laser there. I also added some rocket thrusters to the bottom of these little pods that go on the side of his backpack. 
There's also lots of little holes around the suit that you can you can add in additional parts. Well, I wanted to close up the ones that I wasn't going to use. Happily, they're exactly the size of a piece of sprue. So you simply clip off a piece of sprue, stick it in there, add a little glue around it, and then you can later go back in and sand it down smooth. I'm also going to be filling in the back of these exhaust pipes. Um, they had some gaps in there, and I'll just use some of the uh, Vallejo plastic putty. You can see that's a well-used bottle there. But for this kind of filling, I like, I like using that. I, I'm still deciding if I want to fill in his little wing flaps up there on the top of his head or if I'm going to leave it, um, leave it as it is and just, just leave it a little more cannon. But I've just about got all the modifications done and it's ready for priming and painting. I primed the model in Mr. Mahogany Spray Primer. It's a rattle can and it really leaves a nice smooth coat on the model that paint will adhere to well and I think it just looks kind of cool in primer itself. It looks a little bit like it's made of chocolate so that made me hungry. Um, but for the first layer of paint I wanted to put this Citadel Dark Reaper on the upper torso, the feet, and the jet packs that will attach to the legs. And I'm just using this stippling method with a really big uh, makeup brush. This allows me to get a little bit of texture built into the model and I can decide how much poke through chipping that I want to leave uh, on it. For the lighter colored parts I use this Citadel Rust Gray and this was for the arms, the legs, the shield, essentially anything that didn't get the, the uh, Dark Reaper paint. And this was applied in the same way uh, as the Dark Reaper using a stippling method just to get that on there uh, leave a little bit of chipping built in and get a little bit of texture and it's a really quick and easy application method. For the metallic parts I wanted to use this Citadel lead belcher and on the jet nozzles I used a dry brush technique. This is really good when you want to get an application of metallics onto a part and you want it to stay fairly smooth and avoid brush strokes as much as possible doing this light dry brushing until you build that color up can leave a really nice metallic sheen on any part. For painting the inner frame parts I use this Vallejo model color basalt gray and while there's not a lot of inner frame uh, parts I thought just having them stand out just a little bit from the rust gray armor would look pretty nice so I just went around and touched into those places with uh, the gray color. I also based the exhausts with this gray color. There's going to be later rust effects applied, but I like using a, a gray color for the base. I thought the shield looked a little plain, so I grabbed my uh, Dark Reaper color from Citadel that had been used on the upper body and just added a few accents across the shield with that color. I also thought that an orange uh, accent color in a few places on the model would look kind of cool. So the primary place I wanted to add it was just on this feature on the front of the model. Now the air color is already thinned so you have to kind of finesse it on and it takes a few coats. I thought the eyes would look kind of cool although a little creepy being this orange color so I painted those with the same color. Note that the way I do this to try and be as precise as possible is I simply align the part with how I'm holding my brush. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to do and I don't have to contort myself into any weird angles to try and get it painted up. And I could have gone back and over painted it if I'd have made a mistake, but this just made it easier. And there's that creepy stare. Now I wanted to do some dry brushing, so I used my rust gray again. That's the lighter gray color. And I just began dry brushing all of the dark blue parts. And I went for a fairly heavy light uh, dry brush rather because I wanted them to really stand out, to really uh, pop. I also did some stippling all around to suggest chipping and scratches and wear and just make it look a little beat up, give a little bit of, uh, break up the uniformness of the surface. For the shading, I switched to this uh, Ultramarine's Blue Contrast Paint. I've started using contrast paint more and more for this because it just works really well. And I just carefully went in and painted these in uh, to just give some definition to the 
details around the model, especially all of those bolts. I think the bolts on, I love bolts on any model, so uh, I, I wanted to really make sure that those popped. But you just get all of the nooks and crannies and raised surfaces, and it really helps make the parts stand out. You can see the edges better, you can see the recesses better, and I just think it gives it a really cool look uh, when you do that. I follow the same procedure with the uh, lighter armored colored parts. I use Vallejo Sky Gray here to dry brush and I also did the stippling as I had done on the darker parts. Again, just to give it a chipped, worn look and make it seem like the paint was a little bit uh, distressed and, and worn out. For the shading here, I used some Dark Reaper, the darker color that I had used, and I just thinned it down with some matte medium and water and made a, my own kind of contrast paint, I guess you'd say, and just went around and again filled in around the bolt details and into the recesses just to make sure everything stood out. For the exhaust, I used this light rust and yellow ochre from Vallejo Model Air, and I applied both colors with a sponge, just lightly touching it on, first the the darker orange color and didn't want to completely cover it, just get it on in spots and then I switched over to the lighter yellow color and applied that over it. I didn't even give it time to dry between the two because I figured if there was a little bit of mixing that would just add to the tones. And once those were applied it gives a fairly nice rusted look but to bring it all together I pulled out the Citadel Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash, and I just heavily applied that on the exhaust, not only in the recesses, but just tapping it on across the whole uh, surface of the exhaust. And when it dries up, it makes for a fairly convincing rusted exhaust. You could certainly use more tones, but I think this will work for this model. To add some additional uh, grime and shadow to the model, I used this raw umber oil and I made a very thick sludge of it. And I applied it in the lower sections of some of the recesses and uh, just various uh, features around the model, not all the way around, just, uh, just in a few places to suggest grime and dirt and just a general shadow that uh, would be in these areas. I used a brush thinned with uh, odorless thinner to just push that back up into the recess. My goal here was not to necessarily do a lot of streaks, but rather to give it a grimy look. So I'm just pushing it back into the, the recess. I'll occasionally clean my brush off, but for the most part, it's just manipulating the oils to concentrate it in those areas to give just additional shadow and griminess. I thought up here on the neck it would look especially good to add some right up there to just sell the notion that there's some grease and dust that have collected. And you can see it just gives a little bit of depth to the shadow, a little bit of grime, and just makes it look like it's been used up a little bit. I also wanted to add some rust stain, so I used this oil brusher, the ochre color from Ammo of MIG, and for this I made a thin wash and I began applying it around the bolt detail. Now notice that this is fairly thin stuff and it spreads out really quickly. It's almost a wash. It's a little thicker than a wash but it's almost a wash. But what I wanted to do was get this color in place and then let it dry a little bit. And once it dried I could begin streaking and manipulating it and moving it around to sell the notion of just rust that would streak down from these areas. I started with uh, a brush that's just damped with thinner and I began pushing the rust back into the most rusted areas and then I used another brush that is not quite as damp it's just got barely a little bit of thinner in it and I began streaking that down and just worked the oils in a process of streaking them and blending them and manipulating them around on the surface. That's one of the great things about oils is you can really work with them to get it just where you want and just how you want. You can really dial it in. Now in a few areas where there had been more spread of the oil than I wanted, 
I damped uh, cotton bud in, in odorless thinner and just went back and cleaned up those areas. I'd forgotten to paint the rockets that I had given this little guy, so I started off with uh, a coat of Vallejo Sky Gray just to make them look almost white but a little bit dingy. And then after that, I went in with some red with just a hint of orange added into it to kind of fit with the rest of the model and painted the tips of those. I wanted to give his eyes a little bit of a glow, so I used this Fire Dragon Bright from Citadel and I painted the eyes. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing the color back up towards the top. I'm taking advantage of the fact that the brush stroke will leave more paint at the end of the stroke than at the beginning. And so I'm just pushing it up into the top because that's where I want the brightest color to be. I'm going to try and get a little bit of a gradient here, but I'm not too worried about a perfect blend. I just want it so when you look at it from a normal viewing distance, it basically looks like a creepy little guy with orange glowy eyes. Once all of that was done, I wanted to put the model together just to see how it looked as a whole. This is a really important process for me at the end of any model build. I want to put everything together, all the sub-assemblies, bring them together, and just see how it looks as a whole so that I can decide if there's any additional steps that I want to take in terms of adding more of the staining or rusting or chipping or any of those things that I did prior to this. It helps to do those things in sub-assemblies, but there's a point where you really need to look at the model holistically. You're not trying to make everything look even, but rather just does it seem to be uh, sensible? Does the whole thing tell a full story about this model? The last part was to add his big round head, and uh, it fits in there. It does take a little fiddling, to get it to pop into place, but when it does, you'll know it because it just sinks right in and you've got it. I close down his lid and I get to take a look at him and see what I think of him. And so far, I'm liking it. Well, I think I'm going to call this little guy done. Um, it's been a fun little build. I've actually spread this out over several months. I've uh, just been working on it a little bit at a time and here in the last week or so just kind of pulled it all together but if if you've never built one of these um, and you're just looking for some some really silly fun find one uh, and, and build it it's it would be great to build either with a young person that you're you know introducing to modeling or just for a fun weekend or short-term project something to just kind of be different from what you may normally do and, uh, I mean, it builds up into a pretty cool-looking little model. He's got his, his rocket nozzles on there and, and uh, the, the exhausts. And, you know, I've given him this laser arm here, so he's looking, looking ready for battle. And got his uh, glowy eyes going there to, to uh, look intimidating and all of that. And I did leave it so that the head can move around from side to side, but I don't want to do that too much because it might scrape paint off. Anyway, this is a fun kit, and, uh, and certainly I would, I would commend it to anyone. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm grateful, especially if you're hanging around here till the end. And, and I know that if you're watching this on the day that it's released, it, it is, this video was released on Christmas Day 2020. And uh, so if you're choosing to watch this video today, I'm especially grateful for you uh, making some time in this day uh, for for me and I appreciate it. So Merry Christmas. And if you're watching this after uh, its launch, then Merry Christmas anyway. Happy New Year. Happy Easter. Happy whatever to be happy about. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. If you've not already done so, there's a subscribe link down here and uh, just click that. I'd be most grateful for that and the little bell icon so you'll know when I have new videos come out. There's also some links down below to the various social media platforms that I'm on. So if you're on one of those, please do connect with me there. I always like hearing from people. There's also a link to Patreon, and that's what makes what I do possible. It's what uh, uh, supports me in this hobby and, and allows me to do it. So it's truly a blessing for me and my family. So if you would like to consider supporting the work I do, uh, just follow that link. And if you're already a supporter, thank you so much. Um, you really do 
uh, make this possible, and I am most grateful for what you do, again, for me and my family. It's just truly a blessing. And as I always like to do, I'll leave you with one final thought plus a little bit of an addition. <laughs> In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day and happy Christmas day to you, my friends. Merry Christmas.